Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So this is part two of a multi-part video on computer-aided manufacturing. And in this segment, we're gonna focus in on the different type of end mills that you can use to do your operations or your clearing operations within your CNC device. So uh, probably not gonna do anything in Fusion or any of the CAM uh, programs, but I am just gonna show you the end mills and hopefully we can get the camera to focus in and do what we need to do. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so there are about five or so different variables you need to concern yourself with when selecting an end mill. Right off the bat, it's just simply the length of the end mill. And for the hobbyist type equipment we're dealing with here, it's really going to be generally about an inch and a half to three inches long, and you don't want to go really too much longer than that. Uh, next is going to be the diameter of the end mill. That is really determines the diameter of the cut itself or the smallest uh, diameter of a cut that you can make. Uh, and again, those are kind of standard widths of, uh, you know, quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth, thirty second, that kind of thing. Uh, next, and probably one of the most important, is the number of flutes of the end mill. And uh, we'll get into more detail here in just a minute on the number of flutes. Uh, next is going to be the... Uh, direction that the flutes go, uh, which are in the industry known as an up cut or a down cut. And the last thing you need to be concerned with really is the, uh, the end type of the end mill, whether it's a, a ball end or a flat end mill or something like that. Uh, there's a couple other things you might want to look into is, is known as the coating type or the, as well as the material that the end mill itself is made out of, whether it's hardened steel or carbide, um, and the coating for uh, different types of coating if you're cutting metal and things like that. Generally, I don't worry about those things. Uh, I get all carbide end mills and uh, the coating, I don't, I don't have a coating on any of them because I'm, I'm usually just cutting plastics or woods. Okay, so here we have the end mill holder that I made a video about not so long ago. And this actually holds all of my end mills, or should I say the frequently used end mills that I have. I actually have a large number of end mills, but uh, you'll see here down at the bottom. It, first, we start off with the smallest bit that I have, which is a 32nd up to a 16th and an 8th. These are kind of uh, my, my go-to end mills when I'm making uh, things in wood and plastics. I do have these quarter-inch end mills that I really use when I want to remove a lot of material, and I generally use those for profiles when I'm making like a cutting board or something like that. And then on top here, I have these uh, V cutters that I use when I'm making signs and letters on the different piece parts. So real quick on the number of flutes, I'll show you what the flutes, uh, different flute sizes are here. So let me try and zoom in. Let's see right about there. You can see these end mills have, these are, uh, I believe, upcut end mills. I really uh, honestly have trouble figuring out which one is which. I'm going to turn it on the end here so you can see the different number of flutes. And you can see this bit here is a four flute end mill and this bit here is a two flute end mill. And just quite honestly, it is what it says that it is. You can see there are two, one and two cutting surfaces. And then this one, there are four. Why would you choose a four, uh, a four flute over a two flute or vice versa? Well, generally speaking, the more flutes you have, the more engagement the tool has with the material and the faster it's going to be able to remove the material. The downside here is there's more material created in a smaller period of time. The end mill has a tendency to heat up, as does the material you're cutting. Uh, so if you're cutting something like plastic, uh, it's much higher probability that the plastic's going to melt onto the end mill if you're not moving quick enough. Uh, I have the four flute. I'll be honest with you, I don't use it very much at all for... Uh, just because the two flute meets all of my needs. Now, I do know folks who really are, are kind of enamored with um, uh, three flutes, which might be a happy medium. I don't have one, uh, but I do all my cutting with two flute end mills in large part. Uh, the other thing to mention here that is just a side note is the, these uh, spirals, these are known as spiral end mills. Uh, you can get one that has the flutes that are just straight. Um, the straight fluted end mills generally are pretty good for cutting plastics, uh, specifically HDPE and acrylic. <clears throat> okay, so the end mills I showed in the last little segment were what are known as flat end mills. Uh, there are also what are known as V cutters, which are these little guys here. Uh, not so little, maybe. I'm going to zoom in. And what you can see here is they literally are what they say they are. They make a V right here, um, and they allow you to cut at very precise angles using this tip here. Now, these are two uh, flute V-curve bits. I don't know that I've ever actually 
seen uh, V carvers that have more than two flutes. Uh, I'd have to research it a little bit. Uh, the big uh, important things to know about V carvers here are the angle of the cut. In this case, this is a 60 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle, um, which means each one of these sides here in this case is 45 and 45. And this is, I believe, 30 and 30. Um, and then the diameter of the V carve and this, these are half inch uh, diameter V carvers. And uh, I have a quarter inch diameter, which I don't use very often, I'll be honest with you. I like these, these half inch because they can remove a lot of material. And especially with the 45 and the 60, the 60 is a, a sharper degree angle here. You can get further down into the material and still have nice precise cuts. And then the 45 allows you to remove a lot of material left and right. So you kind of got to balance those two when you're using these V carvers, but they're very effective for, you know, making signs and letters and that kind of stuff. Okay, two final things about end mills. First is the end mill type. Uh, in this case, let me see if I can zoom in. Oh, I know I can zoom in. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, this is a, what is known as a flat end mill. You can see that it is literally just flat across the top right here. Um, the other primary types of end mills are known as ball end mills or fishtail end mills. Uh, ball end mills you really want to use when you're doing a lot of 3D uh, profile cutting <clears throat> to get nice, you know, kind of round 3D objects and whatnot. And then the fishtail end mill, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure what the primary purpose is. I, I believe I've used it before to cut some printed circuit boards, but I'm not sure, entirely sure uh, what the, the, the primary use case is. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about uh, is the uh, type of cut of the end mill. And so for these flat end mills, I have two different end mills here. Um, and I'll, I'll see if I can demonstrate this. If, if you can pick it up on the camera, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can get some focus. Okay, so there you go. This is a uh, what is known as an upcut end mill, and this is known as a downcut end mill. Now, zoom back out briefly. So, uh, what is the difference between two? So, an upcut end mill it actually takes the material and it moves it up the end mill and evacuates it out of the pocket that you're milling. A downcut does exactly the opposite. It essentially pushes the material the chips as they're known down into the pocket and kind of leaves them where they are. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Well, an upcut end mill, if you're cutting wood specifically, you're gonna get a lot of fraying on the top of the wood because um, it's pushing that material across the top and it's not really cutting the top uh, it, like it is on the sides. Down cut, you're gonna get exactly the opposite. Uh, you're not gonna get any fraying on the top of the material, <clears throat> um, but you might get fraying on the bottom of the material because essentially it's doing the same thing as the upcut just on the bottom side. Uh, uh, again, if you're not clearing a lot of the material with a down cut, then you might get some clogging. You might have issues with chip evacuation, depending on the depth that you're cutting. So it's really the pro or con of how you want to do this. Now, I have, literally, I'm holding my hand the only down cut end mill that I have. It is a quarter inch end mill. Um, I got it as a Christmas present, actually. I'm gonna, I haven't used it yet, but, uh, um, and I just want to show you real quick, see if I can zoom in on this. <clears throat> you can kind of see the difference or tell the difference, if you will. Let's see, right about there looks good. So if you twist the end mill, for me it's twisting it to the right, um, and I'll do one at a time. You can see that the, the it looks like the, the twirl is actually, in this case, moving up. Uh, so when it's, when it's down, maybe I should do it this way, right? You can see that the twist kind of looks like it's twisting upwards towards the top of the router. Um, and then in this case, this is the down cut. When you twist it, you can see that it kind of looks like it's twisting down, like a drill bit down into the material. Um, that is the best visualization you can, uh, that I can kind of explain it. Uh, just looking at the two, um, unless you have them side by side, honestly, uh, it, I find it very difficult to know which one is which until you, if you just by twisting one, unless they're side by side. But you can see in this kind of uh, demonstration when they're side by side, you can see how they look like they're twisting in different directions. Um, so if I twist them both to the right, for me, you can see that they look like they're twisting in different directions. Hopefully that was useful to you. Okay, so the very last end mill I want to show you is what I'll characterize as a specialty end mill from my perspective. It is an end mill that has no twist on the spirals or the, uh, the flutes are not twisted, otherwise known as a spiral end mill. In this case, this has uh, no twist to the end mill, and I'm going to show it to you here. The only size I've ever been able to find this in here is, a, is slightly larger than a sixteenth. Um, and let me focus. There we go. You can see this is a three flute end mill 
because of the three little twines there, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but there is no twist to the flutes at all. They're just, it's a straight cutter. So it's known as a zero helix end mill. And this is predominantly used for cutting plastics. Uh, for me, it's HP, HDPE and acrylic. And what that does is rather than having these spirals that the up cut will cause or the down cut will cause, this just chops everything off. Um, now it does, it minimizes the, the kind of, when, when you cut acrylic specifically, how it kind of moves up the end mill. It minimizes that, but it doesn't get rid of it completely. Uh, but they are useful for that particular purpose. I have not tried them in wood, to be honest with you. Uh, I've only really tried it in plastic and they work, they work pretty well, especially for when you're cutting HDPE. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little video series about the end mills. So we talked about the length and the diameter, the number of flutes, the direction that they can cut, uh, coating, and the end mill type in large part. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Very important these days. Really appreciate it. And uh, again, hope to see everyone soon. Thanks.